Hey, fish people, welcome back to the channel. I'm coming at you with my 365 days of fish keeping series. That means I'll be posting one video a day for all of 2022, highlighting a fish, a plant, fish food, or really anything else fish keeping related. So these videos are gonna be real quick little snapshots of the subject for the day. If we're talking about fish or plants, we're gonna give you a quick little synopsis, maybe a care guide, talking about food or equipment, we'll run down them, give you pros and cons. And I'll also give everything a score from one to 10 based on my personal dislike, preference, likes about the subject at hand, how long I've used it and stuff like that. And as always, thank you so much for the continued support in all the videos. And as always, please remember to make sure to smash that sub button. For today's video, I want to focus on cherry shrimp, which are a Neocaridina shrimp, also known as red cherry shrimp, Latin name on screen now. These shrimp are native to Taiwan and its family of shrimp has over 20 different varieties in it. They are also pretty much everyone's gateway shrimp, I feel like, when I want to start keeping shrimp. Uh, they're a great beginner shrimp for anyone who's looking to get into them. They're relatively easy to breed if you want to try and breed something that's not a live bearer or an egg layer fish-wise. They are also a very peaceful, you know, animal. They're just going to spend their days grazing on plants to core on your substrate and looking for food inside of your tank. Tank-wise, these guys are going to want to be in a pH range of 7 to 7.6. Though I've heard of people keeping them in slightly more acidic water as low as 6.5. They can be kept in tanks as small as 5 gallons, but if you want to breed them, you're going to want to get something a little bigger and probably go with a 20 gallon tank just to better help support that colony. Uh, the general rule of thumb for these guys is 2 to 5 per gallon. I'm going to go on the low end and say 2 per gallon. They grow to about a max of 1.5 inches, which is why, but since, you know, size can fluctuate. You never know, I would err on the lower end of that range. Temperature wise, I'm going to be kept a little cooler uh, between 68 and 74 Fahrenheit. Though again, I have heard of people that kept them in colder weather and actually overwintered them in outdoor tubs and keeping them in higher temperatures as well successfully. So it really, they are adaptable, so it's going to depend on what you want to try and do with them. They can be kept with things like corridors, snails, tetras, rasporas, Really anything that's not going to predate them. Uh, you can even keep them with betas and garamis. I have done that myself and had success. They never got eaten. But if you do notice any predation coming out of your fish in the tank, you can want a backup plan and you know, pull that aggressive fish. If it's a beta, pull it and put it in its own tank and you'll be fine. As far as food, these guys are omnivores, so they'll eat any scraps of food that they might find in your tank. But you know, you can feed them a dedicated shrimp food. Hakari and Extreme make good ones. You want to spend a little more money you can get shrimp king but akari and extremes work just fine since these are a shrimp and it's invertebrate i would have to talk a little bit about gh and kh so for your general hardness which is your gh you're going to want to keep these at a gh range of 7 to 15 or 120 parts per million to about 250 parts per million for the carbonate hardness which is your kh these are going to want to be kept between 2 to 8 or 35 parts per million to 140. So overall, these are a nice beginner shrimp. They're relatively no maintenance, but I'm gonna base this on my personal experience keeping them when I give them a score. And unfortunately, based solely off of my experience keeping them, having no luck breeding them and my colony dying after a year, I'm only gonna give these guys a five out of 10. But again, this is based on my personal experience and my water just wasn't cut out to keep Neocaridinas. I have more acidic water and soft water, so I am more suited towards the Caridinas and not the Neos. As always, thank you so much for the support and for watching the video. Please remember to leave a like and comment down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.